go to Zechariah chapter number 4 verse 6 so he answered and said to me this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel not by might nor by power but by my spirit says the Lord of hosts verse 7 who are you O great mountain before Zerubbabel you shall become a plain and he shall bring forth the capstone with the shouts of grace grace to eight moreover the word of the Lord came to me saying the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple his hands also shall also finish it then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you for who has despised the day of small things for those seven rejoice to see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel they are the eyes of the Lord which scan to and fro throughout the whole earth then I answered I said to him what are these two olive trees at the right of the lampstand and at the ex left. And I father answered and said to him, What are these two olive branches that drip into the receptacles of the two golden pipes which the golden oil drains? Then he answered and said to me, Do you not know what these are? And I said, No, my Lord. Verse 14, he said, these are the two anointed ones who stand beside the Lord of the whole earth. God bless his word. These are two who? Anointed ones. This verse 14, look at those two anointed ones. I just jumped to read from verse 6. I should have read from verse 1 and see this picture of Zerubbabel, I mean of Zechariah, the picture that he saw, which was a prophetic message to come and encourage Zerubbabel, the governor. Now, I want to remind you that Zerubbabel was a governor under the government of Babylon, though he was a Jewish man appointed to lead God's people. And when the time for Babylon stay was over, there are groups of people that began to return. Ezra came with another group, the first group. Zerubbabel came with another group. And he was in charge at this moment. And when it came to handling the temple, building the temple, and bringing the temple of the Lord back and raising it up, they discovered that there was so much rubble and rubbish and such a heap of mountain of stuff on top of the venue and the place where the temple was. Praise God. And it looked a very great task to revive the temple, rebuild it. And so Zerubbabel is a leader, his hands and his leadership and the guidance that he offered the people he was feeling a little bit unable to do the work so this is what happened Zachariah who was a contemporary of Haggai as a prophet brought a word that kind of awakened Zerubbabel thank God for the prophets somebody say thank God for the prophets and the word came directly to the leader, Zerubbabel. He was like the apostolic leader of the movement of God's people at that time. He said, this is the word of God. There are two olive trees that are connected to the lampstand. And there are some pipes, golden pipes, bringing in oil. So that this golden lampstand, holding lamps, can have light if there's oil. And the oil coming from the two olive trees the two anointed ones. And he said it's not by might or power, 
but by the Holy Spirit, says God. In other words, Zerubbabel, the time we are in, it's the Holy Spirit that's going to help you to deal with this rubble and rubbish. The mountain here in verse 7 is not the mountain, uh, a normal mountain. It is actually the rubbish and the stones, the debris and everything that was left on the temple site. And he's told it's going to take the Holy Spirit. Somebody says it's going to take the Holy Spirit. So what God has put in my spirit is that we have to take the church back to the Holy Spirit. It's going to take the Holy Spirit to undertake our assignment. If we are going to be established, if we are going to be strengthened in the inner man, if we are going to be secured a position by God, it's going to take not another infrastructure of might. You see, Zerubbabel, you will not use the tongues and the excavators. You will not use the machinery you got. It's going to take the Holy Spirit. And if, as believers, we can, uh, we can get to know the place of the Holy Spirit again. And particularly in the mega word we call anointing. Somebody say anointing then the task ahead of every child of God is going to be done and accomplished. Are we together? Having said that, therefore, I want to show you that there's a Holy Spirit that is going to help Zerubbabel. As I was studying scripture, I discovered this Holy Spirit here, this anointing here has a name. And the name of this anointing is the grace of God. They will remove this mountain. They will remove this rubble. They are going to undertake this task. With a shout of grace. The anointing here is having the name the grace of God. So what is going to happen is that. As I share scripture. God has decided to pour his anointing upon believers and upon this church that anointing is called grace the other day we heard about the great grace that was upon the early church you remember and great grace was upon them and when the great grace of god was upon them they were able to do mighty miracles the church multiplied and exploded why because of the grace of god the anointing so the subject of anointing is something that is important for an apostolic people. We have to press in and touch the anointing of God and be able to move in the spirit and the mountain shall be leveled. The assignment shall be undertaken by the hand of God. Somebody say hallelujah. So write this down. Having given that introduction, I want to deal with what I'm calling demystify the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Removing the mystery regarding the anointing we have to begin to see the depths of the anointing and what does this mean notice in verse 14 uh, place verse 14 uh, before your eyes these are the two anointed ones who stand beside the lord of the whole earth the anointed ones if you have a bible in with the new king james or maybe another version it may have a footnote about the anointed ones. Can you check that in your Bible? The footnote. Or the other translation of that verse. The two anointed ones is. Sons of fresh oil. Say I'm a son of fresh oil. Say it again. I'm a son of fresh oil. The two anointed ones are sons of God that are fresh oil flowing in their lives that is able to cause them to shine in the temple of God. A child of God will need oil to shine. Hello? Go to Psalms 92 and verse 10 as we lay this foundation regarding the anointing of the Holy Spirit. But my horn, you have exalted like what? Like a wild ox. 
I have been anointed with the fresh oil. David here is describing what the church and God's servants and God's people, what the church and God's people should have, fresh oil. Somebody say fresh oil. If we are sons of fresh oil, then here it is. We shall be anointed with the fresh oil in this time. Amen. And so when you hear the word fresh, oil, fresh, the word fresh in the Hebrew is a word talking about something greenish, something fresh, something green. The oil there is something that has not been uh, overused and changed color. Lily, literally, is something new. The Hebrew word means green or new. New oil. Praise God. And you come to discover if we are positioned by God in a new place, somebody say in a new place, we will require new oil for the new assignment. Amen. So, let's begin to study the subject of anointing and demystifying the anointing glory to god the freshness and what i believe god for in this house is that there's going to be a fresh move of god upon the believers let me tell you anointing has been thrown into the pulpit to be a matter and a subject and something which is like a commodity for the pastors and the preachers anointing is for those that seemingly are moving with god but the church must understand that if you are a child of god you are expected to move in the anointing so there must be a transfer now from the pulpit to the chair and to your life and to the congregation so that every believer can begin to understand God expects you to move in the anointing. In the presence of the spirit. In the power of the Holy Ghost. Are we together? Now, in whatever area that you operate in, you need to operate in the anointing. This morning I heard in the spirit, uh, in my dream, that there's going to be an awakening. And a mic was handed over to me to make a prayer on awakening. And I know that the church of Christ, beginning with this apostolic house, must enter into a new awakening. And the awakening can never happen without the move of the Holy Ghost. The anointing is a matter that has, become, has to become a reality in your life as a child of God. Are we together? How many of you desire, having done that introduction, fresh oil, fresh anointing? I envisioned yesterday a church where everybody is anointed. Just come to think of it. Everyone is anointed. Show me what kind of church that's going to be. Everybody is anointed. Wow. A church where everybody is anointed like the man of God. That's the church we want to raise in the month of March. Yeah. In fact, he bad dimension. Sasa hata nikwambie mwende nyumbani, ni kwenda kutafuta nani? Anointing. Everyone is going to be anointed. Glory to God. Before I read a scripture, can we first of all ask you to join me in making a prayer right now that God, I want to be anointed. Kayapa. Stretch your hand. Let's pray right now. Just open your mouth and let's make a prayer. Because God is sending an awakening in the church again. Ask God to anoint you now. Father, I desire fresh oil. I desire anointing. Father, I desire to be anointed of you. I desire right now. Oh God, the church in this last day must be anointed. Oh God. Shata pasilimosha. Tarina maza. Jante mazaka puraja. Zate shilibozo. Father, I desire your anointing. Lift your hand and ask God to give you anointing. That's the word of the Lord in this hour. Some of you are not lifting up your hand. I rebuke that spirit. I declare, lift your voice and ask God for an anointing. There is no other way. There is no other way. 
that we can be awakened unless we have an anointing god i pray let the church enter into a realm of the anointing of the holy ghost my god i need a ascending of fire of the spirit in the church one more time oh god it's not just the leaders in the nation of kenya that will walk in the anointing it is even the believers that are going to walk in the anointing i pray my father that it's time for businessmen that are anointed it's time for teachers that are anointed it is time for men and women that are in the marketplace walking in the anointing it is time for the church ordinarily men and women young and old to walk in the anointing for it is not gonna be by power or might it's by the anointing of the holy ghost in jesus mighty name we pray amen so go with me on this journey go to the gospel of luke chapter 4 and verse 18. let's look at several things about the anointing of the holy spirit glory to god the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me to do what to proclaim good news to the poor notice just keep it there keep it there brother don't be in a hurry the spirit of the lord is upon me anointing has to do with the holy spirit resting upon you no visiting but just resting upon you and then when the spirit of god is resting upon a believer there must be a reason for that anointing so the spirit of the lord jesus said is upon me because you must identify the because the reason why the anointing of god is upon your life your uniqueness as a believer has to do with why god traced you and poured the anointing upon your life and why is god directing a specific anointing upon you there must be a reason there must be a reason the spirit of the lord is upon me because or he is upon me for the following reasons do you know why you are on the earth do you know why you are a child of god and a believer now the reason why you are a child of god now god will send the anointing of the spirit upon you because of that task because of that purpose are you listening to me i know that it's a very common understanding in our day that everybody must be encouraged and motivated to know their purpose to know why they are on the earth most motivators will teach the people and encourage the people to find why they are on the earth well, if you can know your purpose in life in the 90s mouse monroe taught us and when we began to get television and write-ups and internet was coming in and we began to know there's a man called mouse monroe who was teaching on purpose you know you need to know your purpose you need to know who you are you need to know your gifts you need to know and all that but listen when you know what you are and what god has called you to be it is important because the anointing of god will rest upon you for that reason for you to be able to accomplish that purpose praise god and listen the only thing that makes a difference in somebody's life is the anointing that rests upon them you can be gifted but the gifts are not having an impact in your life but the anointing will make a difference in your life glory to god and jesus said he has anointed me and look he has sent me if you are anointed then that anointing will cause you to understand to what are you sent to do and to accomplish amen and your ascending is attached to the anointing upon your life and the anointing upon your life is for the reason of you being sent let's look for instance in this example in luke 4 18 why jesus was anointed number one to preach good news listen if you do not know as a believer right now what is the purpose of your life you don't know why you're here let me tell you pick the purpose of christ because he is in your life one to bring good news number two to do what to heal the brokenhearted and to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind and to set at liberty those that are oppressed glory to god and verse 19 to declare uh, proclaim the year of the lord's favor and declare that favor is here right now praise god and so ladies and gentlemen this is the reason why jesus christ was anointed find the reason why you are anointed and you're anointed for what because anointing for it to be real 
is attached to the very purpose of your life. Hallelujah. Now, go to another scripture in the Old Testament and find men who are anointed. There are many. David was anointed. Saul was anointed. Samuel was anointed. There are everybody who walked with God in the Old Testament was anointed. But I found in First Samuel chapter 10 verse 6, the anointing of Saul. Though Saul mismanaged the anointing, God's grace was sent upon King Saul, but he didn't manage it well. But in chapter 10 verse 6, he was instructed, then the spirit of the Lord will come upon you and you shall prophesy with them and be turned into another man. He had been told, go, you meet a company of prophets with the harps and instruments and they are singing and prophesying. And then as soon as you meet that company, something will happen to you, King Saul. Then the spirit of God, some version says, the spirit of the Lord will rush upon you. That's a statement I wanted to pick. The spirit of God so will rush upon you. Will come upon you like a rushing of a mighty wind. Praise God. In this hour, ladies and gentlemen, God is awakening us through this word. And there's going to be a rushing of the Holy Spirit. The anointing upon our lives in this season. There's going to be a rushing of the spirit upon our lives in this season. Glory to God. I say a rush. It's like God is coming in a hurry. He wants to awaken a new generation that is anointed by God. And I pray that each one of you is going to be affected by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. There's a rushing. Even in the Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost, it came with a rushing mighty wind. There was a move from the four sides, uh, uh, directions of east, west, north, and south from heaven. And there was a wind that blew upon the house where they were. There was a rushing of a mighty wind. The Holy Ghost is going to rush upon the church in this month in Jesus' name. Anointing. Listen, only anointed works please god only anointed works pleases god or please god anything not anointed will not please god did you hear what i said if we don't walk in the anointing of the spirit whatever we are doing cannot please the lord anything in the old testament that was brought for God's service had to have the oil poured upon it and it was dedicated to show this thing is set apart for use by God. Believers in our day want to be used by God. Let me tell you, we have to be anointed if you're going to be used by God. Praise God. But the mentality we have heard in the church is this. Those who are being used by God are those who are preaching. Those who are singing, those who touch mics, those who go on stage and pulpit and so forth. But we all know in these days of the restoration of the apostolic church, what do I mean? Of returning the church to the original foundation. What do I mean? Bringing the church to embrace the whole uh, New Testament Christianity. In these days, everyone who is born again, who has Christ, must appreciate the anointing of God in their lives must understand that it's expected for them to move in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Now, anointing distinguishes each one of us so that in whatever we do, it can be pleasing to God. Because through the anointing, we'll be able to activate our faith and see great things happen. Anointing is an act of God through which God sets someone apart. Anointing helps set someone apart and begin to bring the speciality of this individual in his or her interaction with God. Anointing helps in developing somebody's qualities and virtue and the purpose of uh, their lives in the ministry. Anointing will help you to grow and to develop virtue and in character and the certain qualities as a minister in the work of God. Glory to God. Anointing is critical. Whatever you are doing in the city, you better do it in a, through the anointing of the spirit. And you will see the difference. I tell you the truth. My God, whom I am preaching and who has given us this word, will have to prove to you 
that when you move in the anointing, life is a little different than when you are just an ordinary Kenyan walking around in the streets of the city. It's time for you to begin to operate in the anointing and you begin to see the difference. Hallelujah. I was trying to study and I found out the root meanings of this word anointing. I know there are about seven Hebrew words. We'll not go into that for now. I'll just give you the summary of that. However, I found out that the old shepherds of the sheep in the olden days had something they used to do that helped develop the, the, the purpose and the word for anointing. Listen, the sheep they used to rear, and I don't know whether that happens today. I think they are the vets have all kinds of medications. The sheep used to be attacked on, their, you know, on the wool and inside there by all kinds of insects. And all kinds of insects like lice. And these insects would try to find their way and try to come behind the ears of the sheep. And if they, become, they come behind the ears and they begin to, to, to bite, ultimately that sheep will die. So the shepherds came up with an idea of getting oil and they would apply it on the head of the sheep. And this oil would, you know, can you imagine wool, which is oily? What will happen is that the insects, when they are trying to get to the ears of the, of the sheep, they will just fall off because of the oil. And when the shepherds applied oil on the head of the sheep, there were three things they were expecting of that sheep. That they were saying this oil to protect it from insects. One was for protection. Secondly, it was to bless the sheep. And thirdly, it was to empower that sheep to continue to live. Oil of the Holy Spirit upon your head will protect you, you cannot just die before your time. The same oil was to signify that you are blessed by God. The blessing of God is upon you. Hallelujah. How many of you know the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow with it? If that blessing is upon you, you will never be the same again because of the oil. And then we are empowered of the sheep was empowered by applying the oil. Amen. And that's how we're going to be established this year. That's how we're going to be empowered by the oil of the Holy Spirit. There's a, a word, a Greek word, New Testament word for anoint is the word krio, uh, krio, C-H-R-I-O, which is a word that means to smear with oil or to rub with oil. And it is also to rub with oil, anointing the head, is exactly what happened for consecrating men uh, into office or kings and, and prophets. They would smear to show this one has been consecrated for that office. And, and this word simply means to anoint and to smear and to rub with oil and to consecrate for office or for any religious service. And that anointing was done for kings and also done for prophets and for all the priests and all those who served God. Today, the Bible says we are not just priests, but we are also kings. That tells me as we operate as kings in the marketplace, we need oil. We need anointing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Now, so in Bible times, people are anointed with oil. It is signified their call, uh, showed their call for God. And, and, and their service to God and so forth. Now, anointing is the impartation of God's power and God's ability into our lives so that we can do the work that we are assigned to do. There are two things in that statement. God's power and God's ability. Someone say, I need God's power. And then God's abilities. Now, every child of God will need in this hour anointing so that that anointing will bring these two aspects in our lives. Power and his ability. And listen, the power of God 
is able to come upon a believer even when you are not on the pulpit. We have to change our mentality in the issue of the anointing and discover that the anointing of God is available for you when you are walking on the streets. The anointing is available on Monday, Tuesday, when you are doing your shop and you are doing your buyings and your sellings under the anointing.